In this video, I'm going to share with you my own personal remelanotide experience, also known as PT-141, touted as the latest and greatest cure for erectile dysfunction. We'll take a close look to see just how effective it is. So stay tuned for my PT-141 review. I'm Lance Hitchens, and if you enjoy this type of content, then please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and leave a comment below. Today, we're going to take a look at bremelanotide, PT-141, one of the best drugs for erectile dysfunction that I'll bet you've never heard of. I'll be explaining just what it is and a little of its history. I'll tell you where to get it and how to take it. I'll cover the effects of PT-141, and then I'll discuss with you my own personal experience with taking bremelanotide. Okay, a little bit of science. Bremelanotide is a cyclic heptapeptide lactam analog of alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, or MSH. Now, I know that's quite a mouthful, but what you should take away from it is this, that it's a peptide, which is a short chain amino acid, and that it's very similar to a group of peptide hormones that stimulate a type of cell in our skin called a melanocyte to produce melanin, the pigment that makes us look tan. But melanocyte stimulating hormones also have a bunch of other functions. MSH can also suppress appetite. It has anti-inflammatory effects. It can influence the release of aldosterone, which regulates the water and salt balance in our bodies. And it has an impact on sexual behavior. And that's the effect that we're looking for here. Now, I need to give you guys some definitions here. The word agonist refers to a chemical that binds to a receptor, that activates a receptor. Antagonist refers to a chemical that blocks the action of an agonist. And an inverse agonist is a chemical that causes an action that is the opposite of the agonist. So bremelanotide is a non-selective agonist of the melanocordin receptors, uh, otherwise known as MC receptors primarily acting as an MC3 and MC4 receptor agonist. MC4 acts as a regulator, among other things, for sexual behavior and male erectile function. So bramelanotide activates the melanocordin 4 receptor, impacting sexual behavior. In the early 1960s, research showed that administration of alpha MSH in rats caused sexual arousal. And this research continued up through the 1980s. Then scientists at the University of Arizona began to, uh, attempting to develop alpha MSH along with analogs as a potential sunless tanning agent. And they developed several analogs, including melanotan 1 and melanotan 2. Now, one of these scientists, a guy named Mac Hadley, injected himself with twice the dose of melanotan 2 that he had intended and experienced an eight-hour erection as a result. To pursue the potential sexual dysfunction agent, Melanotan 2 was licensed to a company who then stopped development of Melanotan 2 and began development of Bremelanotide. Bremelanotide is thought to be a likely metabolite of Melanotan 2. This company, Palatin Technologies, developed an intranasal delivery system and began phase two trials for both female sexual dysfunction and male erectile dysfunction. But the FDA halted these trials due to an increase in blood pressure among a small segment of the clinical trial subjects. The drug was then reformulated to be delivered by injection and trials continued with phase three trials and a new drug application filed with the FDA in June of 2018, last year. Now, I've heard that the new drug might be sold under the trade name of either Vilisi or Rakinda. I'm not, not sure I'm saying those right. Now, rumor has it that at one point in this development, after a possible ban by the FDA or after the FDA halted testing, the staff of doctors and scientists who had developed bremelanotide put it all out on the internet. Everything, the test results and the formulation and sequencing information so that anyone could formulate it. Now, all I know is that if you do a search for bremelanotide to buy on the internet, 
you'll find countless companies that formulate it and sell it on the internet. So what does it do? To answer that, let's take a look at the big three erectile dysfunction medications, Viagra, Levitra, and Cialis. They're all phosphodiesterase 5 blockers, or PDE5. PDE5 is an enzyme that promotes the breakdown of cyclic GMP, which is a chemical compound that relaxes the smooth muscles in the walls of the arteries of the erectile tissue, allowing blood to rush in and causing an erection. PDE5 breaks down cyclic GMP, allowing the blood to drain from the penis and causing detumescence. So the big three ED medications work directly on the erectile tissue of the penis. Bramalanotide works differently. Instead of working on your plumbing, bramalanotide works on your libido, your sex drive, your overall desire for sexual activity. In other words, it makes you horny as hell. And it lasts for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. But more on that later. Now, as I mentioned, PT-141 is currently under development by Palatine Technologies and is not currently available for purchase with or without a prescription in the United States. But it's, it, but it's available pretty much everywhere outside of the United States. Now, like I said earlier, if you do a search for where to buy bremelanotide on the internet, you'll find countless companies willing to sell and ship you the product. And China seems to lead the field. I found that a trading company called Alibaba will sell just about anything made in China. And this includes uh, consumer electronics, uh, apparel, vehicles, and chemicals. You can buy it in any quantity from a single 10 uh, milligram vial to as many boxes of 10 vials as you want to buy. Pricing ranges from $25 to $40 for a single vial to about $100 for a box of 10 vials to about $50 a box if you buy more than 10 boxes, which means that you can purchase a single dose for as little as 50 cents for a 10 milligram dose. On a side note, you can also get sildenafil, vardenafil, and tadalafil, which are the generic names for Viagra, Levitra, and Cialis respectively, in powdered form for about one to $10 a gram, depending on the quantity that you buy. So if you purchase 100 grams of Tadalafil at $100 a gram, that'll run you about 100 bucks. That's 5,000 20 milligram doses. That's about 50 cents a dose. Now, if you compare that to the retail price of Cialis in the US, that's got about $30 a dose. Just saying. So what do you think? Does this sound like something you might like to try? Leave me a comment below and let me know if you've ever heard of bremelanotide and what you think about it. Okay, now we come to the tricky part because the best way to take bramelanotide to get the best results is to inject it. Now, I'm not talking about shooting it up as if it were heroin or something. I'm talking about injecting it as if it were insulin in the stomach. So here's what you do. Bremelanotide comes in a vial with 10 milligrams of freeze-dried powder in it. Now, you'll need some bacteriostatic water, which you can find on the internet, to rehydrate it. Bacteriostatic water is sterile water with a 0.9% benzyl alcohol added to prevent the growth of any bacteria as a result of multiple entries into the container, usually with a, sharp, uh, with a sterile needle. You'll also need some syringes. Now, I use a half inch, 30 gauge insulin needle that holds one milliliter. That's the equivalent of one cc. And you'll also need some alcohol wipes. First, after opening the aluminum seals on the top of the bacteriostatic water and the vial of bremelanotide, you want to sterilize them by wiping them down with the alcohol wipes. Then, inserting a syringe into the vial of the bacteriostatic water, draw off one milliliter or one cc. Insert this syringe into the, top, into the rubber on the top of the vial of bremelanotide, aiming the needle at the side of the glass, and then slowly inject the water into the vial letting it run down the side of the glass and come into contact with the powder. Slowly rotate the vial until all of the powder is dissolved. Now this won't take too long with most of the powder dissolving instantly, but some of the powder may take up to a minute or two to fully dissolve. 
Now, this is important because the powdered bromelanotide is fragile and you don't want to agitate it. You could break down the peptide, breaking the chain of amino acids, and then it would be useless. Now, take another alcohol wipe and wipe down the area of skin that you're going to inject into. This should be about three inches to either side of your belly button. Then take a second syringe, stick it into the vial, turn the whole thing upside down, and draw off the amount that you want to inject. Now this would generally be about 0.1 milliliters or 10 units to 0.4 milliliters or 40 units. Now I would start off with 0.1 milliliters and gradually work your way up to whatever amount works for you. Now for me, that was 0.3 milliliters, but you'll need to experiment to find out what your own PT-141 dosage is. Now what I do is I draw off slightly more than I intend to inject. And then I hold the syringe with the needle up and I flick the syringe a few times with my finger to release all of the air bubbles. Then I push the plunger in to expel all of the air and some of the liquid until the plunger is at the exact amount that I want to inject. But honestly, uh, when I'm injecting into the skin like this, air bubbles aren't really a concern. I feel like they're really only a danger if I was to inject this like directly into a vein. Now for me, this is pretty easy since I spent a year self-injecting interferon to cure hep C. But for the first time I did that, I spent the better part of an hour trying to work up my courage to stick myself with a needle. And it was mostly because I didn't know how hard to poke myself to get the needle to go in. Now, let me tell you, these needles are sharp and they'll go in without you even being able to feel it most of the time. So what I do is I don't start an inch or two away and just jab at myself. I touch my skin with the tip of the needle and then just slide it in. Works great. So I've been doing bromelanotide for a few months now and I can report on my experience with the drug. I'd like to describe the PT-141 side effects first. As soon as I inject it, almost instantly, I get a feeling of slight nausea. Now this isn't anything that I can't ignore. Now this appears to be a common side effect. I followed a forum of gents doing bromelanotide and a lot of them report the same side effect. One of them said that he treated the nausea successfully with a Tums or a roll age, but I haven't tried that, mostly because it's just not that severe. I also noticed that if I injected bromelanotide frequently, like every other day, the feelings of nausea upon injection went away. I also noticed that when I did it every other day, it also became more effective. I've only done it every other day for about three weeks and I did the same amount every time. Now, I feel that now, uh, once it has become more effective and no longer causes nausea, I might be able to get the same effects with less. Also, when I first did it, it took about eight hours to kick in. After I'd been doing it for a while, it only took two to four hours to kick in. So I feel like if I've been doing it for a while, like every other day, my body tolerates it better and it's more effective. So I started out doing 0.1 milliliters or 10 units, and that had no noticeable effect. So then I upped it to 0.2 milliliters, and that's when I noticed an effect, although it was very slight. So then I upped it up to 0.4 milliliters, and that's when the full effects kicked in. Now I do about 0.3 milliliters. Okay, so this next part is a little difficult for me because um, I'm a private person and talking about my sexual experiences is not that easy for me. So first off, I was incredibly horny and that lasted for a couple of days. Now, that's not something that I ever experienced before with any of the big three uh, ED medications. So let's just leave it at that. I also had a Woody that just wouldn't quit. I'd done it in the morning the first time and it kicked in about eight hours later. And I had an erection that lasted all night long. In fact, I was worried about priapism, which is a persistent erection lasting longer than two hours and which can be dangerous and harmful to your penis. But apparently that's for a rock hard erection. And the erection that I got from bromelanotide didn't quite make it to the rock hard status. And for all I knew, it might have occasionally gone down while I was asleep. At any rate, no harm, no foul. Even though I had an erection most of the night, I suffered no ill effects. But the next day, it was still fully in activated mode and my erection persisted on and off for most of the day. Now, this really didn't bother me at all, but 
I could see that if I was in a working environment, it might be a problem. Now, one thing I did notice, my erections seemed to be fuller at night when I was asleep than they were during the day and during those periods when I wanted to have sex. And this seems to be another common side effect with several of the men on the forum reporting a similar experience. However, I took an ED med and that seemed to resolve that. Even though I'm a guy who doesn't experience great results from ED medications. In this case, it worked just fine. Okay, so there you have it. We've gone over a bit of the science and history of granulanotype. We've talked about the effects, where to get it, how to take it. And I've shared with you my personal experience with taking granulanotype. And I guess the bottom line is this. Would I recommend this for other guys who have ED if they could have the same experience that I did? Well, no, I'm not a physician, so I don't feel like I can go out on a limb and recommend this product to anybody. I can only report on my own experience. And I loved it. I thought it was great. It made me feel like a teenager again. The only downside that I can think of was that I had an erection at times that I didn't really want one. But you know, it's been so long since that's been a problem for me that I almost welcomed it. Okay, so that wraps up this video. Leave me a comment below and let me know how likely it is that you're gonna try remelanotide for yourself. And if you have tried it, how did it work for you? Hit the subscribe button to subscribe to this channel. Share it with your friends and on your social media. And hit the like button. Thanks for watching, I'm out of here.